Hello, um, today I'd like to cover a little bit of, about external contributors and how you can easily add them to your self-managed GitLab instance. So what we heard from you is that you want to provide a unified user experience for both your internal and your external developers and the administration and management overhead is something that concerns you because it typically slows down onboarding of external developers. It should be so much quicker to get external developers up and running. Uh, but, but at the same time, you, you still want to separate things and uh, the your own employees from your external developers and only your own employees should have access to company confidential information. So uh, this demo today is all about integrating an external developer community with ease. And what we'll, we'll be covering is enabling an external identity provider uh, by using the SAML standard for, for that. And uh, we'll touch on uh, what it takes for the external party to add developers uh, to a certain role uh, that is related to working for you. And then we want to differentiate between private, internal, and public project, and what that means. And the external developer should then connect to the GitLab instance authenticating with their company's uh, IDP. Um, and they will then only uh, be granted uh, access to public projects or those that you want them to work on explicitly. Uh, there is a configuration that we uh, uh, done uh, before of uh, before this little demo uh, there's um, there's one thing that I want to kind of draw your attention to and this is that we will require a certain group definition or role definition to be available that's GitLab GitLab Ninja external and when we will be having that then they should all be treated as so-called external users um, so let's have a look at the Lock-in, the standard lock-in page of, of, of GitLab. Normally, that's what, what you see. So you can authenticate with a given username and password, and eventually you, you're using LDAP, but nothing on top of that. But we will now go beyond that um, by enabling that third party, and I simply called it third party coders, uh, to be able to authenticate with your GitLab instance as well. It's uh, pretty easy. I quickly uh, save the changes here, and that's you all set and done with that. Uh, interesting is what the um, external company needs to do in order to assign users uh, to, to your GitLab instance. So um, in this case, the identity provider of that company is a product called Keycloak. That's a standard SAML uh, implementation. You could use others as well. Um, um, and uh, this is just an example. Uh, what we will typically have is the, identi uh, the, the identity of a so-called client. In this case, this is GitLab, GitLab Ninja. And the only one thing that is worth mentioning here is that we might have certain roles defined and we will have in this case a GitLab GitLab Ninja external role that maps to the configuration you saw er earlier. And the only thing that needs to be done is to look at your user base. So this is all uh, the users of your external entity. And there's for example one user is called Cool Hacker and that user Cool Hacker um, can be placed into a group. And uh, one of the groups that this user is placed into is coders working at Ninja. And that's a group, and we can quickly have a look at that group definition. And the most important thing with this group definition is as there is a, um, a role mapping present, and that role mapping is related to that client that is called GitLab GitLab Ninja. And it uh, assigns that role GitLab GitLab Ninja external to it, and that's all that's needed in order to uh, set up that ma mapping. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh my uh, login page here because in the on the administration page I have enabled the third-party coders. What I can now do is I can click on that link and that gets me straight into the login page of that third-party identity provider and now I can the user is cool hacker in this uh, in this case with a given password I just provide that there can be two-factor authentication and what have you but I keep it simple for now I'm signing in and that gets me back straight into uh, the GitLab uh, instance as desired so what I can do is I can for example 
inspect what I'm having available to, to see here. So I'm currently looking, for example, for groups and exploring the groups. And one thing is notable. Um, you will be finding this is what is said here as well that uh, that you will see the groups that are public and you see this by this little icon so there's some public projects and and whatever projects but you're not able to see all the internal projects or the private projects on your GitLab instance but what if I now want to add this user to a certain project so this is the page here I'm now logged in as a different user that's a standard employee here and this standard employee has, of course, access to way more projects. For example, uh, this um, user will have access to a group called Prometheus Tests. As you can tell by the icon, this is an internal group and the group is only visible to internal users, but not to these external users. And there is certainly um, a list of projects. They're all internal projects. I can click on that. And uh, if I now want Cool Hacker to be working on that project as well. One thing I can do as a maintainer or an owner of that project, I can search in that user base. I will be finding that cool hacker user. I basically make him, uh, uh, make him or her a developer uh, to that project, project and I'm uh, all set as far as that is concerned. When I'm heading back to um, to the page of that, uh, that uh, externally identified user um, and for example search for uh, and explore some projects here I will be finding that that internal project amongst all the other public projects that I'm having access to but this is the one only one and only internal project that I'm now able to work on um, so that's all pretty cool um, um, and that basically concludes that um, little demonstration. So in summary, what I showed you is um, that integrating a third party IDP based on open standards is an easy way. It really makes adding external developers effortless. And there is also very low overhead on the supplier side on that employment company for all these external developers to actually add them to, uh, uh, to your GitLab instance you will still be able uh, to maintain confidentiality and limit the visibility to external users. And um, uh, what we can achieve really is that onboarding time is, is absolutely reduced to the bare minimum uh, and still fine-grained access control is guaranteed. Um, so that's, uh, that's basically what I, what I wanted to show uh, to you today. Thank you very much for, for your attention.